So one of the primary functions of the tool manager is to build new tool assemblies. Now in order to build tool assemblies you need to have cutting tools and holders. And basically you take a cutting tool, you put it on a holder, you can adjust the length of how much it's sticking out of the holder, you can even create custom holders if you want to, and when you do that you are creating a new tool assembly. The tool or the holder or the assembly whichever you select will always show up here in the active viewing window. The properties for whichever item you pick will be shown here in this window. And here we can see the tree structure of what this assembly consists of. So our half inch flat long finish end mill uses this particular holder and uses this particular end mill as an assembly. Also, when you're looking at the tools in this viewing window, you have the same viewing functions as you would in Mastercam. In other words, with my mouse, I can roll my wheel to zoom in or zoom out, and it is a directional zoom, so wherever you put your cursor becomes the focal point for the zoom. You can also hold down the wheel on your mouse and rotate this around to see it from different views. You can also right click and go to a straight top view, a straight front view, or a right side view, or go back to the isometric view. Now if we were going to create some new assemblies we would need cutting tools and holders and you can see there are none in here right now. If I wanted to I could create a new cutting tool what I would do is come over here and double click on cutting tools and it will open a new tab up here for tools and we can see in here there are no tools right now. I can create a tool, I can create a new milling tool or I can create a hole making tool. As you see if you pull this down there's all different types of end mills, face mills, corner rounding tools, dovetail cutters, ball cutters, key cutters, and then over here we can pull this down and there are hole making tools. Drills, reamers, boring bars, taps, center drills, counter bores, counter sinks. So basically I could pick one of these tool types and it's going to open a window where I can define a new tool. And this is pretty straightforward. Nothing unusual here. You put in the diameter, the overall length of the tool, the cutting length, which is the actual flute length, and when you select one of these boxes, you can see exactly what information it's looking for to create a tool. Corner type, I could tell it if it's a corner radius or if it's a full radius, like a ball end mill, or a chamfering tool, or none, of course, is a flat bottom tool. Now when you select something that would require a radius, you can fill in the size of the radius here. Down here you have non-cutting geometry. So what's the shoulder length? What's the shank diameter? So I could say this half inch cutter has a quarter inch shank. I can add a taper angle and a taper length if I wanted to. Let's go to the next page and here we can put in additional information and this looks more like the tool descriptions that you'll see when you're inside Mastercam and you double click on a tool. Your tool number, your offset number, a default feed rate, a default plunge rate, a default retract rate, a default spindle speed, the spindle direction, number of flutes, the actual material that the tool is made of, how coolant should be used, whether it's flood, mist, And then you can put in values for step over. Of course, this is as a percentage of the tool. So I could say I want the step over to be 50% of the tool, or maybe for high speed cutting, I might want to pick 8% step over, but 150% step in Z. So it's a long depth of cut, shallow width of cut. Same thing for finishing values. Here's a description of the tool name. Again, I can tell it whatever I want. Um, I can put in manufacturer's name 
or tool description. So we actually have a list of manufacturers right here that you can pick from. And the actual catalog number of the manufacturer's tool. So if you wanted to create a tool from scratch, you could do that. This is how you do it. When I say finish, it's going to create that tool in the properties. I could see what all those settings are. And I can still modify those right from here if I wanted to. But there's my tool. That's the custom tool that I created. So if you want to, you should do that. Create yourself a basic end mill. Put in some parameters. I don't really want to keep this in mind, so I'm actually going to select that tool and hit delete to get rid of it. But by all means, you should go create one and practice.